Last week, I dropped a video sharing a CSS template, and the legendary Paul from WP Tuts brought up how painful it was to not see variables in it. So this got me thinking how important variables are and how important it is for Elementor users to understand variables. After all, they are coming to the new 4.0 editor, and if you're using Figma, well, Figma uses variables as well. A good first place to see variables in action in Elementor is gonna be here in your site settings, over in your global colors. These are all variables. When you add a new global color, you're creating a color variable. And what this does is it allows us to make a change to a color and apply throughout the entire website. For an example, I have a couple sections here using the same background color. Maybe we want this to be a bit lighter. Well, we could just go in and change it directly. And you see it changes it throughout the entire website. This is the purpose of variables. And when we go through our entire site and we use the variables to add in our colors, this means we no longer need to go in each element one by one to make changes if we do need to make changes. All of it's gonna be done inside of the site settings with our global colors. And we can use variables in all kinds of ways with our font sizes, with our spacings and our paddings and margins, with our gaps, with our box shadows, border radiuses, and the list goes on. And that's why I'm really excited for when they do get launched in the 4.0 editor. Let's take a look at how this works inside of the CSS. I've created a few variables here. We put it inside of a root, which we always keep at the very top. And then we listed our variables. I created some variables for border radiuses and I gave them a value. Same thing, I gave one for a box shadow. Now, when we're putting together variables, this list, we build it up as much as we can because we're creating global styles. Right here, these are global styles for all my border radiuses. Let's say we have a bunch of buttons, all right? we got a few buttons in here. I got four buttons on this page and all of them have this class right here, radius S, which is for small. Let's say the client comes back to you and they say, you know, I want this radius to be bigger. I want it to have a little bit more roundedness to it. All we need to do is edit it inside of one place and this would be our radius small. Look, I'm gonna make it really big. I'm gonna put 25 rem just to show how this would work. Let's go ahead and save that. I'll refresh it. And we're gonna see now all of the buttons are all going to take effect. We create our CSS variables, which act as our global styles that we style all inside of one location. Now, right now, this is just a really small amount of CSS, but just imagine this were to build up and were to get long. Well, it does make it difficult to go through the CSS editing it. But when we have all of our variables set up and all of our variables connected as much as possible to our CSS, this means we're gonna be doing just about all of our editing right here inside of the variables when it comes to our styles. For example, this box shadow right here, and I did set it up with a class and I've already styled it up. Now I don't need to do anything else to this snippet right here if we need to make changes. Here inside of the front, we could see a little bit of a box shadow. Maybe the client wants us to be darker. Well, we could just come in here to our variable and change it. I'm gonna make the opacity from a 0.25 to a 0.5, which is 50%. It should become a lot darker now. And then whenever we have this connected throughout the site, it updates through the entire website, just like our global colors did. And you see, there it goes and gets darker. And really quick, let's take a look at Figma because Figma also has variables. Over here in the top, we have local variables. Click on the icon. And now I have some that I created for border radiuses. And I matched these up with my Elementor website. By the way, some plugins that connect your sites with Figma, they usually connect the variables and that's how you get the styles to sync. Over here, let's say I have a variable of a small radius, but again, the client wants it to be bigger and wants it to go site wide. Instead of going into each element, just like Elementor going through every single element, well, here we only change it inside of the value in our variable. I'll put something big so it stands out. 
we change it to 40 and you can see the changes apply to your element. And just like we would build this out in our CSS, well, we could also build it out fully as much as possible inside of Figma. And hopefully when the 4.0 editor comes out, we could do something similar with that as well. Being able to create as many variables as possible and style everything up at a global level is gonna make your workflow a lot more productive. Cut out all of that repetitive work that you would do inside of Elementor. Now let's take a look at last week's CSS template and how it could be fixed with variables. Here's a CSS snippet that we used in last week's video. This was to style up the post content. Because Elementor doesn't give any options to style post content, the best way is with CSS. And inside of that video, I showed how to edit each of these in order to style your blog post. Now, if you wanna see that video, I'll leave a link somewhere up over here. You could take a look at how we walked through the CSS, but basically, for an example, if I wanted to stylize this block quote right here, adding the background color and the border color, you would have to go into the snippet right here and then add it your border color here and order your background color here. Now this isn't terrible because there's not that much CSS right here, but if we wanted to simplify this, here is the updated version. Here are all of the variables created for the same exact template. Let's say we want to change the color again of this blog quote. Instead of scrolling down and trying to find that class, well, everything is here inside of our variables. You can find that color right here inside of the blog quote border. We could find the blog quote background. And then all of the styles that would be edited is just all edited right here. That's the only thing you need to change in order to style the snippet. Now I am going to update my blog and I'm going to add this as well and guide everybody to this video because this is a much better way to style it up. And when I released last week's video, I should have caught this. I should have looked for a better way to do this that's easier for everyone. So going forward, I am going to use these variables. But basically, let me just quickly show you how this works. If we were to look at, say, the sizes for my heading, and the paddings and the spacings, well, we got a variable set for our spacing. So we're gonna put a lot of space on top and a little bit of space on the bottom. We would go up here if you want to add more spacing to the top, just look at which variable it is. The padding top is gonna to be a space dash XXL. We just go here and edit this. If you want more space on the top, maybe we want to change this to a 3.5 or a 4. I mean, everything is pretty much good the way it's set up, but if you do want to make changes, you edit them right inside here. You do not need to do anything inside all of the CSS. It's already written. It's already set up for you. No need to update anything. The only thing you have to do is edit your variables to change your styles. Going forward, I am gonna be focusing more on variables as well as fluid typography and fluid units. Even though we focus more on design here on my channel, it's still important to understand HTML and CSS best practices when we are learning to master web design. So if you do have any questions, definitely drop them inside of the comments. And if you haven't done so yet, you know that good YouTube stuff, liking and subscribing. It really does help to support this channel and I appreciate that. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.